Mr. Coffey, do you have any more on that response? Or? Just to agree with Jim that, yeah, shared service is a great buzzword, but sometimes in, in, uh, when you get into the weeds, um, you're not, if you're not going to save money, um, then just saying you're for, for shared services doesn't make sense. But I do think in New York State, generally, we have too many layers of, of government, and we need to see the ways that we can cut through that, work with other municipalities to try to save money. That's something that, that as a town board member, you're constantly looking for ways to save a buck. Mr. Carrier? So the, the, the concept is, in, in and of itself, as Dan said, not a bad concept, but the devil's in the details. So let's, let's be aggressive about reviewing that, debating it, analyzing it, and see if it truly is a savings. But we're not the first community or the first county that's e examining this, so we should study others to see how effective it's been in other places. Okay, thank you. All right, this next question is gonna start with Mr. Oh wait, hold it, did I, did, I, did you have any more response, Ms. Becker, I'm no, sorry. No, we're all, all set? Okay, so the next one, Mr. Carriero, this is the question is to you. There has been a movement to make Bethlehem a more interconnected community where people are encouraged to walk and bike around more throughout town and the rail trail plays a big part in that. What are some ideas you can think of to further make Bethlehem a more attractive community for walkers and bicyclists? Well, it's a, actually a great question. Um, most homes that I visit, they talk about the connectivity uh, issue vigorously. So the, the work that our, uh, you know, that Tiger and his team have done to, to put sidewalks in the community is highly regarded. In fact, each evening I probably get two or three orders for sidewalks. It's the most perplexing conversation in the world because I go there, so they want to talk about it. People want connectivity. It's a, the buzzword right now, and people love it. Um, so clearly, we have to have a plan of, expansion our side, of expanding our sidewalks in the implementation. But I have to tell you, it was a joy to go to Selkirk last weekend as the sidewalks were being put down because they were asking me for them, and then on Monday morning, they appeared. Now, I didn't take advantage of that, Supervisor Van Leuven. I really didn't. Um, I said, look, it's in the plan. They're going to be here pretty soon. And they did. They showed up the next morning. But you, the community was jubilant. So I think the connectivity and recognizing that the citizens of our town want this connectivity is very important. But they also wanted a pool that worked this year. And we should not have been caught, caught off guard and not find that we had the availability of our pools and the infrastructure being repaired. So there's two sides to this coin. The voters want what they want, but we should not be letting the infrastructure fall apart to the point that it's not workable. All right, Ms. Becker. Michael, will you repeat the question? Thanks. There has been a movement to make Bethlehem a more interconnected community where people are encouraged to walk and bike around more throughout town, and the rail trail plays a big part in that. What are some ideas you can think of to further make Bethlehem a more attractive community for walkers and bicyclists? Well, I don't know if attractive is really the right word, but I think to think about um, additional restrooms, or restroom facilities on the rail trail may be something to consider. Um, safety perhaps with um, some solar lighting um, on the rail trail. Um, I would be looking at um, areas on and off areas that are paved to um, gain access to the rail trail. Um, and I do believe we do have the small ambulance. I know it's not called an ambulance, but that's what it is coming soon, is it? I believe that was uh, um, certainly, I think Joanne Cunningham through the county um, made that happen um, and I think we're all very proud of that. Thank you, Joanne. Um, and I'm gonna leave it at that. The rail trail is great, I will say. It's wonderful. Okay, Mr. Coffey. So, yeah, I agree with Jim as you walk door to door that connectivity and sidewalks is a huge, huge issue that you hear from residents. As I mentioned before, we, we, uh, the highway department put sidewalks on Murray this year. Everybody contacts the town constantly saying, when's mine coming? What I'd like to see is a comprehensive plan. To me, the, the high need areas are uh, Kenwood, Beacon, uh, Thatcher, um, Blessing Road in North Bethlehem. Um, and 
you know, and also uh, folks from Haswell Farms and the Enclave want to be able to get to the town park, so some way that we can connect those. We can't do all this in one year without busting the budget. We have a five-year cap plan. Maybe we can stretch that out and do a seven-year cap plan, but we need to have a plan in place so that at least when we talk to residents and they say, when am I getting my sidewalk, we can say, you're on the schedule, and here's when it's going to come. Now, with regards to the rail trail, there's a lot we can do. As I say, as we get into the Delaware Avenue project, we want to see more connectivity so people on the rail trail can visit businesses. We're looking into the feasibility of extending the rail trail up to McCormick Avenue towards the Slingerlands uh, traffic circle and possibly be able to uh, enable residents from that part of town to get down there. We need more signs. We need to educate people. I'm both a cyclist and a walker, and I can tell you there's a lot of tension. You get cyclists have to learn that when you're passing somebody, say, on your left, and when, if you're a walker, don't walk through your breast and be oblivious because there are cyclists. So we need more communication for the people using the rail trail to get along better. Um, and good news next year, the South Pearl Street, right now it empties out in a parking lot in South Pearl Street. That's going to connect to the Corning Preserve, and we hope that that's going to get done this spring. So those of you who are diehard cyclists can go all the way from Voorheesville all the way to downtown Albany and on from there. But definitely sidewalks and walkability, traffic calming, more of those flashy lights. Uh, David and I have discussed the need for more of the lights. They are effective. We just put one on Kenwood so that when people are going too fast, it gets them to speed down a little bit. And when you're designing new roads, when you have a straightaway road, people tend to go fast. So more twisty, turny roads to calm traffic. Thank you. Mr. Carrieri, you have one minute to respond. Okay, so the, the rail trail is a fabulous success story for the county. Um, but let's remember, the county provided the rail trail. It wasn't the town. So we're taking advantage of a phenomenal um, relationship with them. I think what, what should be done is to sit down with them and make sure that we have coordinated plans about how we can improve the rail trail um, and have more usability. Um, suggesting that there should be businesses along the rail trail may be a bit of a stretch because it's a seasonal event. It's maybe six months a year that you could use the trail. So as much as we love it, it's a difficult place to uh, carry on year round. So it has limited application. But we should look and see, are there businesses that would be willing to uh, position themselves and, and run a six month, six month business um, that would satisfy clients along the way? And I think the new Bliss uh, location for um, along the rail trail is a good idea. I would love to hear their feedback on the effective uh, application of the, their bus their new business with uh, the rail trail. Okay. All right, Ms. Becker. I know people who cross country ski on the rail trail during the winter months. I could see how, I mean, you, you mentioned Bliss could serve a warm beverage to those people out there snowshoeing and cross-country skiing on the rail trail. Now, in terms of uh, sidewalks and uh, walkability, I have to say for 30 years I've suggested um, and will continue to suggest perhaps that Highway will work that sidewalk on Kenwood Avenue so that our, by our young people can indeed get to the Little League Park without riding on about two inches of uh, roadway. Um, I find that extremely hazardous. It's a safety issue, and I'm going to encourage everyone I know to consider that a top priority. Thank you. All right, Mr. Coffey. Um, so the town's got a bike and ped committee. We also have the planning department. Also, the town has this thing called the pedestrian and traffic committee. Once a month, uh, the supervisor meets with the department heads, and as a town board member, uh, we rotate. Uh, one town board member can, can sit in on it, and we literally sit around a table. Every single complaint concern regarding traffic, regarding speeding, uh, regarding uh, walkability gets discussed, and we hammer out how to best do it uh, in terms of the budget. In terms of businesses along the rail trail, uh, Jim's correct. It is a county-run facility, but they do partner with us. The Delaware Avenue project discusses that we need more cut-throughs so that people can um, use businesses along the way. We've got Bliss. Before the planning board now, there's also a fitness studio and healthy cafe, which is going to be right next to the rail trail. Um, and I think when we talk about having signage to educate bicyclists and uh, walkers, maybe we could have sponsors so people would know about the great restaurants that we have in town. So they're not just zipping through town, but they can stop and patronize some of our restaurants. Okay. Thank you. All right, this is going to be the last question, and then we're going to go into closing um, remarks. Mrs. Becker, you, this one is going to start with you. 
With the town growing, do you feel that the staffing levels of the Bethlehem Police Department and other town departments should be adjusted and what areas? Yes, it does need to be, sta staffing does need to be increased. I think um, we discussed that in Highway. Um, 10 years ago, there were 241 full-time employees. There's currently 200 and the town has grown in that time. I think when the census data comes in, it's going to show that we're going to need to, to increase our um, staff. The police department, I believe, is three um, road patrol officers under what they were, I'm gonna say five years ago. Um, that's something to consider as well. Um, we know that the aging population is growing. I think that truthfully, each department, need, we need to meet with each department to make sure the needs of the community are being met with the limited staff. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Coffey. Uh, we're definitely feeling growing pains. As Joyce pointed out, at our peak, we had 241 employees. Now I think we have 220, but we also have some seasonal and part-time employees. We've got more people coming into town, which means more roads, more leaves to be picked up, more water to be delivered, and our staff uh, has actually uh, shrunk. So it is something, uh, earlier tonight, you heard the highway debate, you heard Tiger talk about the highway department, how he would like to have um, more personnel. Well, guess what? Every department head I've talked to, and I've met with every one of them, every one of them would like to have more people. Um, so we need to look into uh, expanding um, the personnel that we have, uh, but we need to do it in a fiscally responsible manner. We've kept us under the tax cap every year, and that's important uh, you know, concept to do. We've never had to go back to you and bust the tax gap because of the planning that we have and the long-term vision that we have enables us to spread uh, expenses out. But I think we're at the time we, sh we need to look um, to, to bring in more personnel because our town just keeps growing and growing and we're doing, um, we've tightened the belt as much as we can. Mr. Carriero. So the, the facts are that we are struggling with uh, the amount of services that we're providing and um, you know the, the complement of police officers that we have on staff. So the police officers tell me they're working tremendous amounts of overtime. Clearly that indicates that you're gonna pay one way or the other. I think it's time that we increase that complement. But second to that is, this is not news. Everyone's known this. And so Dan, if you wanted to address the issue, why are we still talking about it? You and Joyce are on the board. You knew it's a problem. We're struggling. You know, we need to address it. So I, I would suggest to you that a good vigorous discussion and debate about how do we solve this would be appropriate. But just saying that we should have more is not sufficient. You've known that. Secondly, you know, maybe we need to address revenue in a different way, bringing businesses into this community and not having a technology park that sits with the bones of a building that failed before it was even completed. We're not doing a good job at economic development. I did bring a business to this community. I encouraged and I negotiated with the planning board through Bob Leslie five years ago to bring National Bank of Koksaki here. Now, is it death defying? No, they were turned down by the planning board, but I went back to the, the bank the planning board and the developer and was able to negotiate them coming in here. I would suggest we have to become much better at bringing business here. Okay, Mrs. Becker. Um, perhaps we should consider a long range plan um, for our workforce in the future. And I think um, that's something that uh, I will talk to the supervisor about uh, looking at that. Um, I think. Okay, Mr. Coffey. Uh, the question was about staffing levels, but since Jim talked about business development, um, I'm gonna respond to that. I said last year, and I've said this year, uh, I agree with Jim that Vista Tech, for whatever reason, has failed. Let's take the tech sign down, folks. The tech's not coming. Let's, let's have a public hearing on it, and let's look at some other ideas, what we can do with that property. There's the Blue Cross Blue Shield building. The good thing is they pay their taxes, you know, uh, the Peacock building. So as long as they're paying their taxes, there's not much that we can do as a town for it, but we do, 
have certain areas in town that we have businesses and we need to bring more in. We have Liz Staubach, who runs our micro enterprise grant program, which has been very successful at helping our small businesses in town. Um, but I, I agree there's more that we can do, particularly with respect to Vista. Okay, Mr. Carriero. So Dan, the day after uh, the election last year, you made a statement that um, we should look at bringing Target in. What happened between then and now? You knew the reality was that that project failed. First of all, why did we allow it to get that far? If they were on the verge of collapsing, which several of us in the financial industry could see, we should not have gone ahead with that project. But secondly, it's not the town employee's fault. They do a phenomenal job for us with less resources. It's the leadership. We need to develop business, not squeeze more tax dollars out of the people that are living here. So I think we've got to be a lot more creative about finding the people that will fit here. And Dan, if you have that concept of bringing Target in, let's get on it. What are we waiting for? The building is empty. It's not even completed. Our economic development is feeble. It's not just bad, but I think we have to work as a team to get this going and bring business to our community and become business oriented. Okay, thank you. All right, we're gonna to move to our closing statements, two minutes. I'm gonna start with Mr. Carriero. So I would suggest to you that um, when you work with an institution where you have budgets and you have limitations, and essentially what they would say to us is you need to do more with less and cut your people. It was a constant battle of restructuring and figuring out how to meet your budgets with less. Um, I became a genius at it, not because I'm smart, but when you do it long enough, you begin to figure out what you have to do. And I think what I would bring to the board is the talent of how do we address the issues we've got, let's argue about them, debate them in a gentle manner, of course, but there's got to be debate about the real issues here, which is we need growth, not in the, in the consumer end, but in the commercial end. We need higher tax revenue. We want to provide more services. We want to rebuild our infrastructure. Then you've got to bring in more revenue on a larger basis. I would suggest to you I'm well equipped to do that. In terms of my background with government, I had that time as a person that developed a water district with a team of people, and we were able to take it as in eminent domain and make it an effective system that provided better services to our community. We then had to run it at a profit and we had to replace the infrastructure. 30% of our hydrants were not working. They all work now and this water district is making money for the community and providing good water. So it's manageable if you make that your objective. The other issues we're faced in this town Clearly, not everybody on the board has the talent to resolve them, so bringing someone with a new and fresh view who wants to develop new strategies is a healthy thing to do. And someone who's balanced between uh, business and government is a perfect choice. But finally, my colleagues have gone out of their way to show all the things that they're doing, yet we have these tremendous deficiencies. I would suggest change is not a bad idea here. Thank you, Mr. Carriero. Ms. Becker. When I'm elected, I will carefully explore future development and inform citizens in areas where projects are planned. Um, I'll be looking for different areas. Um, many people, and even though it's 2019, are not computer savvy and they feel there's, they have no avenue to ask their questions and I will be available, available to them to answer their questions and their concerns. Town employee morale, I'm gonna to work to understand the workings of each department, cross training of employees, which we already see being done in highway, evaluation of each department needs and duties. Our workforce is aging, working with human, human resources to provide transitional planning and training is extremely important. We know that we recognize the years of work information that is lost when an employee retires. Fiscal responsibility, the town's in good shape for this year and the best financial rating in the area. I am fiscally conservative, even though my husband may not agree, with the need to provide residents with the best services available and even a greater challenge we're gonna have in the next few years. Um, 
I, th I think I'll make a difference by serving you, our residents, for a second term on the town board. Consider me as your community connection to town government. But I'm going to end with a quote from JFK. Let us not seek the Republican answer or the Democratic answer, but the right answer. Let us not seek to fix the blame for the past. Let us accept our own responsibility for the future. I encourage you to make your choice and get out there and make your vote count. Early voting begins on Saturday, the 26th of October at the Lutheran Church for hours and dates. I'm sure our town clerk can advise you. And I also know that the Board of Education, Board of Education, the, the County Board of Elections will also, don't call the Board of Education, will be there to give you um, also the information. So get out there by Tuesday, November 5th, Election Day, and make your vote count. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Coffey, he has the last word. Thank you, Jim and Joyce. Thank you to our sponsors. Thank all of you uh, for coming tonight. It's been truly an honor to serve you the past 10 months as a town board member, and I would be honored if you would once again return me uh, to four more years. Um, just a quick survey. How many of you were born and raised in Bethlehem? How many of you grew some, came from someplace else, grew up someplace else? This is the community that we live in, and this is what I'm seeing when I go door to door. A lot of people were privileged to grow up here. A lot of people, like my wife Eileen and I, came here because we explored Bethlehem and we fell in love with it, and we chose to raise our two daughters here. We have great clean water. We have great police, fire, and EMT. This time of year, you rake your leaves to the curb. They get picked up. We have wonderful senior services that allow people to stay in their homes and not go to assisted living if they want to stay in their homes. We have wonderful parks and trails. A lot of people think the town runs on autopilot. It doesn't. I've met with the department heads. I've soaked up a lot of information this last year. I'm telling you, we have 220 very committed individuals working for this town. We have a budget of $45 million, and we are uh, committed in our budget cycle this year uh, to knock over the tax cap once again. You're constantly threading the needle. 12 cents of every tax dollar that you spend goes to the great services that you get, and we minimize the tax increases to, to you. I agree with Jim that we need to do more on economic development. I'm not wedded to target. I just threw that out there as an idea. Other ideas that we heard when we were doing our comprehensive plan uh, was maybe a senior assisted facility at Vista, maybe a hotel. There's different ideas, but I want to open up that conversation. There's, um, so once again, thank you. I urge you to vote. Take advantage of early voting this Saturday, and uh, thanks once again for coming. Great. That concludes our program. Thank you. Go out and vote.